Welcome, I'm Eleanor Burns. Two talented kids are going to join me at the Bear's Paw for some easy craft projects. Oh, they'll glue up some chains of Christmas, a clay pot snowman, and some patchwork snowballs. Then I'll finish up with the kids' favorite reindeer, Rudolph, and his four-patch quilt. It's a great quilt for using up scraps. Join me. If you're lucky enough to have grandchildren or kids of any age, we have some great projects planned for you. Welcome my new friends. This is Hyla and Seth. So how old are you? Seven and a half. Oh, and how old are you, Seth? Seven. So she's the older one, huh? Yeah. Well, we are making fabric chains today. Fabric chains out of scraps of fabric, and I know you have tons of scraps. You get to be the teacher. You get to show how to make the fabric chain. Well, you take a piece of fabric and you make a hoop and then you put the fabric through and you take some glue on one end. Just a little dab. Take a little dot of glue uh -huh. and you take the other side and you make a, and you put it down and you make a little. And that is perfect. You, you have, it's really getting long. My goodness. Have you ever made a fabric chain before, Seth? Yeah. You did? How long was yours? 300 pieces. 300 pieces. That's enough to go the whole way around the room. Huh? Well, you are running out of these strips. I'm going to show you how to make these strips because it's so much fun. It's from six inch strips. They are um, just half strips, scraps, whatever. You want to take a uh, paper that has glue on the back. See, I have glue too. So you take the glue side and place it on the wrong side of the fabric. And just with a little steam, doesn't take much. Run it along there. Actually, I had a little bit of glue on this end already. And then once you have the glue on, let it cool. Peel that paper away. And presto, I have glue on my fabric. Then take the second sheet, second piece of fabric, place it wrong sides together to it, and just steam right through there. And now both of these pieces are going to be stuck together, and they're ready for cutting. Pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. Well, this is even more amazing. You're not going to believe this. These are only one inch wide. They're one inch by six inch, and I have this special ruler that has all the measurements marked on it. And this is a, a cutting tool. I'm going to just move my chair a little bit, Seth, so I can get in here. I'm going to go right at zero. That would be a good place to start, huh? Put my cutting tool in zero, and I straighten that. I'm going to take this, get rid of it. I have a very messy sewing room. And then just cut every one inch. And you go one, you help me, two, and three, and do you believe how fast this is? And they are perfectly straight strips. Six, pretty good, look at that. All set to go. Really fun, I'm gonna give you this stack. Now, I wish that I did have grandchildren. All I have are grand puppies. And I can't teach them how to glue. Not like you can. Well, the fabric chains are coming great. I know kids of all ages will really enjoy doing this. Seth and I are working on a project that has been passed through generations. I bet you did this project with your sisters and then you taught the same project to your children. So Seth, what does this look like? A snowball. Definitely. We'll have to have a good battle, huh? These are three inch styrofoam balls and we're turning them into something special. You told me late earlier, this looks just like a snowball. Like a quilt. Quilt. A quilt. <laughs> you said it looks just like a quilt, and that's what we're doing. We have two to three inch squares of fabric, some scraps, and Seth is going to turn this into a patchwork snowball. Okay, this is your knife. It is a butter knife, and I think that's a safe knife for children. And now you get to be the teacher. 
Okay, so you're going to grab a square, square piece of fabric. And you're going to use the knife, kind of squish it in there. That's a good term. I like that. And then once that one's um, all done, you're going to um, tuck the rest of that part in. That's good. And then you're going to get another piece, and uh -huh. you're going to start it in the place that you already got the tucked part in. Yep. Here's what it might look like. <laughs> when you're done, you are doing great. I like the way they just fill in all around there. And then you could go ahead and finish it off with a hanger. Do you think this would be good hanging on a Christmas tree? Yeah. Well, we could take a paper clip. That would be the easiest thing to do. Just open up the paper clip like this. And then once you have all of your patchwork done, then just tuck it right down in there. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, you can keep on doing that. And then you can add a bow at the top like this for the tree or if you'd like to make them at any other time of the year, maybe at Easter, you could make a basketful. We couldn't call them snowballs at Easter, huh? How about a basketful of Easter eggs? You know, Seth, you are doing a great job. And we have lots more snowballs to finish. Bring the snow indoors with this cute little snow guy. What do you think we ought to call him? Frosty. Of course, it's frosty. Well, statistics show that quilters are also gardeners. So I know you must have some clay pots around with a little bit of paint. You can make such a fun project. You're already painting the head. These are two and a half inch clay pots right here for the head. So let's get the eyes. Do you have the eyes on already? All right, there in place, little wiggly eyes. Now, how about a nose? What kind of a nose would Frosty have? Okay. And what color would it be? There you go. Got some orange. Ooh. You can use that. Go ahead, Seth. Just dip it in there. You've got an orange carrot. That would look good right below. And what else do you think you need to put on the snow guy? Cheeks, what color would they be? Red. Red? Red, or if you want to do some pink, how about you can just put that on there? That oh. is great. Or we could make a mouth like we could have some black for like raisins or something. Oh, that would be great. Or like pebbles, you know? Yeah. Have you ever played in the snow? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. I grew up in Pennsylvania. We had snow all the time. That is one carrot nose there, Seth. Well, they already painted the hat. Now the hat is from a one and a half inch clay pot on top of a three inch clay tray. Now the clay tray is upside down, got the black painted really well. Now I'm just gonna put some hot glue. What do you think? I think I should do the hot glue, don't you? Yeah. I think it'd be a little safer, but if you're going to have the young people do the hot gluing. Make sure you put a dish of water close by, just in case the hot glue gets on. All right, we'll just let that sit now. Oh, I love it. It's so cute. Boy, he looks happy. Oh, and look at yours. I love the creativity. Okay, now the bottom is a three inch clay pot. It's upside down. This is the next one that you have to do, Seth. This is a two and a half inch clay pot and he goes like this. So if you'd like to get your white paint, you can go ahead and just paint the two and a half inch pot. I think the sponge brushes work really well on this project. They can cover a lot of area. Use paint that's going to wash out. Oh, cover them up with aprons or whatever you have so that they don't get on there. And just let them have a great time. Could be snowing outside and you won't even notice. Hyla and Seth finished their painting. Now we're going to glue them together. So I'm going to start right here. This is the three inch bottom piece. And Seth, you can grab that one piece, put it right on top, get it in there, and you get some glue too, Hyla. And right around on the edge. Okay, put your piece on next. This is where you're going to glue on your buttons. Got your head? Okay, grab your head upside down, pot. 
It's going to go right on here. And yours is next. Okay, now, last one. Grab your hat. And I'm going to just go right around this ring here. Put it all together. And you can fit it right on top. And you know what you need next. You need buttons and a scarf. Okay, you can put your um, base right on there. You just kind of lean it to the side, huh? And let's just get a little bit of glue, and that will finish it. Do you like them? What do you think? Cool. It's cool? How about a red scarf for you and a green one for Hyla? We'll get some buttons, and they'll be done. Hyla and I are making a whole forest full of ornaments. Now you can hang these cute little Christmas trees on your Christmas tree or you could use them as a party favor at a special dinner. Well, I like this one because I like the Santa Claus and all those bright lights. One of my favorites. And I also like this one. I like it with the stars and the hearts and the apples. Really cute. Now what's your favorite one over there? My favorite is this <laughs> one with the little spark, shimmery light and the little angel. Very cute. Very cute. Now, what is this stuff called? Dolls and pins. Doll pins and, and stands. stands. That's right. Now, what did you do first? You take the, the stand uh -huh. and you paint it red. Perfect. And then we glued the clothes pin upside down right into it, huh? And then we cut some branches off of an inexpensive tree. We used wire cutters. They're about three and a fourth inches long. And now it's your turn. You get to squeeze that bottle of glue right in there. You put some glue through the clothes pin and then you kind of stick the, you ha want to have Perfect, um, that's good. The branches a little separate. Very good. And then three in a the row. Last one, you take three in a row. And then for the last one, you fold it in half, and then you stick it down there. So it looks like a kind of a real Christmas tree. Perfect. And you can use that as a hook to hang it on your Christmas tree. Now you've got some really cool looking stuff all picked out. Let's just lay it flat. And then see if you can decorate your tree. This is the best part. Okay, what do you want to put on there? Well, I was thinking of putting on some of the lights. That would be good. And just lay it across like that. And then some of the sparkly uh, buttons. Look at that. How about, let's get that one right up at the top. This glue is hard to get out. Drop that right in place. Very cute. Okay, now what about some of the branches? I can and tell then, you're a real girly girl. And then just some regular buttons. And what's, is that your favorite color? <laughs> pink? You My picked sisters. Up, oh, you picked out pink and purple. Look at that. Who says Christmas ornaments have to be red and green? Honestly. And I like your, how about one of these? This is looking good. So the next time you have a special dinner with your, with your family, then you can make one of these for everybody. Make it ahead of time so it dries. And then when you set the table, you can stand it right at their place. How's that? Good. This is perfect. Let's see if we can stand it up and turn it around. Oh, you've still got some more going on there. That is going great. You did such a good job. Thank you. Kids love Rudolph, and they especially love his red nose. But I don't think I can make this quilt with this nose on. So I'm just going to take it off and show you Rudolph's four patch. Oh, it's such an easy quilt to do. You'll have it done in no time. 
This is what it looks like. It was created by Lou Ann Stout. It's four patches surrounded by background triangles and then set together with solid squares. Very easy to do. Now, you need to have scraps. That's easy. You need to have a stack of medium and dark scraps. And they are only three inches by 10 inches long. I actually made two stacks. I have the medium in this stack, the dark in this stack. So for every block that you make, you need to have at least one of these and you need to have two five and a half inch background squares. Okay, I'm just gonna take one set of scraps. It's that quarter inch seam. You know, I think this is easy enough and kids will probably have a great time doing this with you. Okay, just quarter inch seam allowance, 15 stitches to the inch. Go ahead and assembly line sew, three inch by 10 inch, medium and dark, one after the other, just pedal. Well then, once you have your strips sewn together, take with the dark, set the seam with the dark on the top, press the seam, towards the dark. Now I'm using such short strips so I can get great variety in my patches. I'm just going to take and set these aside. This is one set. You want to take a second set of medium and dark, place them right sides together, but put the dark with the medium and just line them up, get that seam matched together, wiggle that in there and then cut three inch sections. I'm gonna just line up on the left edge. If we have 10 inches and we're gonna cut three three inch sections, that's nine inches, that gives me enough to square off. So just take, cut three three inch sections, leave them all layered together. And if you want to, you could even mix these up for greater variety, but I'm just gonna leave them together like they are as it is. Now take up one of the patches and have them so that the seam on the top is going away from you. The seam underneath is going down. Line those up and just sew right along there. I'm gonna show you a really neat way of making that center lay very flat. You know, you want it to match together, but you want it to be flat too. Okay, so let's take a look and see. Ooh, pretty good there. Now to make a lay flat on the back, you wanna take the top seam and push it to the right and the bottom seam and push it to the left and then just mush that center. You actually create another four patch on the back side, but that makes it lay nice and flat. Okay, just gonna take, get rid of those threads and now I'm ready for my background squares. You need to have two five and a half inch squares. You're just gonna take them with them um, stacked up and you cut from corner to corner. And then two will go on opposite sides. You're gonna take and put this one here and put this one here. And actually I like to sew with the triangles on the bottom because there's the bias stretch on the bottom and you can also center them easier if they're on the bottom. Let equal tips hang out on both sides, get them lined up and centered and just sew them right along there. You know, the song, the whole story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer started in 1939 and it came about because Montgomery Ward wanted to give away a promotion book or perhaps a promotion coloring book and they asked one of their employees, his name was Robert May, to come up with a story. Well, he took the ugly duck duckling approach, you know, when he was just a little boy growing up, he was kind of skinny and not so good looking. So he did the Rudolph story kind of around his life story. And he played his story, told his story to his little four-year-old daughter, Barbara, and she really enjoyed it. Okay, I'm gonna set those seams on the triangles, press them open like this so that the seam is behind them. Take a look on the back side, make sure it's nice and straight. And then line up your ruler with those edges and trim them off. Just get rid of those big old tips on one side, take them, get rid of them, turn around, and then do it the same on the other side. You know, when he wrote that story, actually, the uh, country was in poverty, but they still did so well. They sold two 
2.4 million by 1939. And then it was his brother-in-law who wrote the lyrics to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Okay, that's going to go on either side like that. And when you flip it, line up the point with the seam. You've got some big tips hanging out on that side. This one's going to go on the other side. So his brother-in-law wrote the lyrics for it, and 10 years after Mays wrote the story, Gene Autry sang that song, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and oh my gosh, it became so popular. You know, that was second in popularity to I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. So it just became so popular, and it was just a little later it was in uh, 1964 that Burl Ives did the television special for Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And they have played that every year. Kids absolutely love that special. Good ones for adults, too. Okay, now I have the triangles on the other side. Going to set that seam on both of them, open and press them. And that is about how easy this flock is because now all I have to do is square it up to seven and a half inches. I'm going to take the 12 and a half inch square up ruler and place the quarter inch line right here in the edges, put the diagonal line going right down through there. Oh, it looks good. Let me slide it over. Got the quarter seam, the quarter seam. Okay, trim on the right side and across the top. And then just pick up that block, turn it. So there's two sides left to trim. I'm going to put seven and a half inches, seven and a half right along there, quarter inch seam there and there. Ooh, looking good. Now, if you use two different sets of background triangles, you can set it together, set the blocks together in diagonal rows. Got those great quarter inch seams there. Let me see what I have here. So this is one of my background fabrics and I just lined that up in a row. This is my second set of background fabrics lined up. Take a stack of medium and dark seven and a half inch squares and then you can just place them in between each other. Ooh, they're looking so good. Then I need to have another block over there. And then once you have your whole top laid out, you sew it together in vertical rows. You always take this row, Flip it right sides together, sew right down, sew all the vertical rows, and then sew back across the other way. Well, I like Rudolph, so you enjoy making this quilt. Kids and Rudolph really do love sugar cookies, and I have a great recipe for you from Sandy Thompson's grandmother. Now, these are the ingredients. You need to have two eggs, one and a half cups of sugar, a cup of butter, one and a fourth teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of almond extract. Now I know you can't see anything in there, but this is what makes it really good. And two teaspoons of vanilla. Well, get those ingredients in your mixer, mix them up good. And once they're mixed, add two and a half cups of flour and then Put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour. And that's when the fun starts. You know, for sugar cookies, this pastry frame really helps. So just put a little bit of flour down in the bottom and also have a sleeve on my uh, rolling pin. Oh, that helps too. Now this is my mix that's been chilling. Just pull out a oh, good old hunk of it, whatever you want. Kind of flatten it out and then roll it so it's a quarter inch thick. Oh, look at this. Well, I like gingerbread men. I don't know which one you want, but I think I'm gonna go for gingerbread men. This is just a little cutter. Just push it in there and let me move this aside because once I put that cutter in there, it's just gonna lift right out for the cookie sheet. Just grab that out there. Oh, it's so cute and just drop all of your little cookie men in a row on your, on your cookie sheet. These are so cute. And put these in the oven at 375 for eight to 10 minutes and they'll come out perfect. Well, I already had these in the oven and they are beautiful. 
you can make some great icing just by taking a half teaspoon of cream of tartar and three egg whites. Just beat them up good until you have nice peaks all over them. And then take a whole package of powdered sugar and add that in. Now you can take little piece, little bowlfuls out, turn it into any color that you want. I think I want to have some red on my gingerbread man because now you can have a little contest with the kids. Let them decorate their gingerbread men to their heart's content. You can always give a little prize for whever makes the cutest one but I'm just going to do something really simple and sprinkle some little things right on top, some little colored sprinkles, make it really cute. And you're going to have the best sugar cookies you ever had.